last lecture we have uh, finished uh, rotational sleeve, uh, total stress analysis and uh, for undrained uh, conditions, factor of safety for resisting movement as well as disturbing movement explained. Then method of slices by Swedish slip circle and for cohesion as well as friction soils we have also discussed. Then effect of tension crack on this slope stability analysis also has been discussed. Then how to find it out this uh, location of slips circle center also we have discussed. Now uh, effective stress analysis also last to last class also we have discussed this effective stress analysis by uh, method of slices also. Other methods of analysis uh, available is uh, Taylor stability analysis. So, this Taylor stability analysis it is used for frictional and cohesive soils uses a dimension less number to iterate towards a solution. Then Bishop's method also I have discussed also earlier. Now how do you measure particularly this land slip monitoring? How do you monitor what is the slope failure and land slip monitoring by means of virtual instrumentation? If you look at here, this is a slope or embankment. Generally what happen? There are, there are if you look at here, this is all, all your borehole inclinometer. This borehole inclinometer generally provided. So, to find it out how much it will settle, what is that, what is that settlement along this, along this and how much this flow will be there. Then also there are measurements of crack dilations. If you look at here, these are all your 1 and 2 measurement of crack dilations are if you look at here, then you can find it out how much crack at the top it, it generated and by means of borehole inclinometer you can also measure this what is the how much settle as well as the piezometers are there with the help of piezometer you can find it out water table, fluctuation of water table in uh, whether it is rise in water table in rainy season how much the water table falls down particularly in summer season by means of piezometer. Then strain gauges has been put it anchor strain gauges, anchor strain gauges along the slope it has been put it. So, this anchor strain gauges it has been put it. So, with this anchor strain gauges you can find it out how much strain that means what is the displacement of this slope. Then geophones also sometimes we provide to measure this generally you can generate means how what is the what is the travel geophane is there how much the travel time from top to bottom you can measure it by means of geophones. So, these are all your land sleep monitoring system. Then flow slides soil clay rock debris may behave like liquid it may behave like liquid water content. So, means behave like liquid if water content is greater than liquid limit. If you look at here if the water content of soil of consisting of clay or may be debris if this water content is greater than the liquid limit it will behave like a liquid the assumption and in that case it is called flow slide. It is called flow slide the slide will flow like a liquid flow slides are extremely mobile as given by Unge Peru in 1970 uh, it has been observed. If you look at here Peru in 1970 earthquake triggers particularly flow slides means what will happen the water because of earthquake triggers this water content increase this water content is more than water content is more than your liquid limit. So, once this water content is more than liquid limit, if this by means of in Peru 1970 by triggering this earthquake, it hits towns of Unge 18 kilometer hour means away at around 150 kilometer per hour. If you look at here, it is started from here, then this flow slides 
it is flowing it is flowing this slope means complete mass of the soil mass along the slope it is flowing and it is coming down. Then next example is also in, in the case of a Colorado it is a national natural landslide laboratory if a major slip is about 3500 years ago and present slip is 1000 uh, years ago. Then the land slip has been means cross section through this uh, mam tor land slip if you look at here mam tor bed is here. So, original original profile original profile of this hillside then if you look at this original profile then it has been this because of this land slip this part has been gone this part has been slip and flow towards the bottom. This is a clear picture means these are all your clear examples of case 1 and case 2 different case studies I am showing. There is a, there is there is a uh, like correlation of movement with this rainfall they have given. So, this is out of context thus I am showing with the rainfall how much the movement can be possible it has been uh, some correlation has been given. Now, this is all about basically about basically your slope stability analysis and basic principles of slope stability analysis how you are going to do this slopes slope stability analysis. Then we will start next part of this dam next lecture will start uh, start with this dam basically if I start with the dam dam has been classified based on type and material of constructions. So, classification is what type of material you are cons taking into uh, for construction point of view that this dam has been classified. Then criteria for selection of base dam type is feasibility first one is your feasibility that means topography, geology and climate what climate you are using and its effect on materials. Second is your cost that means availability of construction materials near the site that is accessibility of transportation facilities. So, what are the different types of dams available if you look at here different types of dams are gravity dam, arch dam, buttress and last one is your embankment and the material construction for gravity dam generally material use concrete rubble masonry for arch type of dam we generally use this concrete then buttress concrete also timber and also steel embankment it is construction of earth or rock. Start with this first one is your gravity dam if you look at this gravity dam gravity dam are dams which resist this horizontal thrust of the water entirely by its own weight. If you look at here gravity dam is the dam which resist horizontal thrust of the water if this is my water label lying here horizontal stress of the water by its own weight complete by its own weight that means if this is the dam gravity dam that means by own weights whatever the horizontal load is coming it will take or it will completely it will resist this horizontal load by horizontal thrust because of your thrust because of your water table. So, by its own weight gravity dam will take the stability they use their weight to hold back the water in the reservoir as I said they use their complete weight. So, that it stand by its own complete weight. So, that backside whatever the water level is there that can be hold can be made of earth or rock fill can be made of earth or rock fill. If you look at this there are two views one is your cross sectional view other is your plan view in this cross sectional if this is a gravity dam generally we say that where this water is reservoir water has to be stored here this water has to be stored. The water has to be stored here that means this is called upstream phase this is called upstream phase then where this water has been stored this is called reservoir this is called reservoir and this bottom part is called hill this bottom part of this where this water reservoir this is called hill and the opposite side it is called toe it is called toe 
why it is called tow? Because of the water pressure thrust, there is a chance that this gravity dam may rotate along this point. So, that is why it is called tow. Then there is a phase, this is called downstream phase and this is your crest, crest is your top of the dam. Then width, width is starting from the base, this is your total my width of the dam, width of the dam. Then if I start with this plan view, if you look at the plan view, this is a span of stream phase, width and downstream phase, then abutment, these are all abutments. Gravity dam, it depends on own weight for stability, means particularly the stability analysis of the gravity dam has been done by its own weight and usually straight in plan through and slightly curved, slightly curved. So, what are the different forces come into the gravity dam if you look at here? In gravity dam, the forces coming is your by means of gravity, that means its own weight, own weight. So, weight can be calculated by means V into gamma. So, V is equal to volume, total volume and gamma is equal to specific unit weight of material. Suppose, this gravity dam has been constructed over soil, then specific or unit weight of the soil or it has been constructed with this rock, then it is a unit weight of the rock. That means, volume, this unit weight is a unit is Newton means force per meter cube or pound per feet cube. If I multiply into volume, so this is your gravity weight of, weight of the dam. Then second part, what is the press, what is the forces coming into picture? Hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure means there are two component in hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure because of your water, one is your horizontal component, other is your vertical component. If I start this horizontal component, this is gamma W, unit weight of water into h square by 2, h is your h is your depth of water at that section, depth of water at that section, gamma w is equal to specific weight of water, gamma w is equal to specific weight of water. Now, h v is equal to, h v is equal to means h h is your hydrostatic pressure means horizontal component, h v is your vertical component, gamma w into v by h v by h is your vertical, h is your vertical component, gamma w into v divided by h. So, v is your volume of dam at that point. So, these are the forces. Third forces means we are discussing what is the gravity, what are the, we are discussing right now, what are the dams and classification of the dam. Then we are starting one by one. First one is the gravity dam and where it has been used, how the stability can be done for the gravity dam. Then what are the forces acted on the gravity dam? In this section, force, forces on gravity dam, third is your uplift. Uplift means the water pressure that comes below the dam foundation a results in upward means uplift. If I come back to water pressure coming below and in the foundation, it push up this is called uplift force. This uplift force u generally it is written gamma w h 1 plus h 2 by 2 into t h 1 is equal to depth of water at upstream phase hill. Then h 2 is equal to h 1 is equal to depth of water at upstream phase, h 2 is equal to depth of water at downstream phase that means lower. If I say if I say that means if I take it here, so this is my depth of water at upstream phase H1. So this is the depth of water at downstream phase H2, H1 and H2. Now gamma W is equal to specific weight of water and T is equal to base thickness of dam, T is equal to base thickness of dam. This is your T is equal to T is equal to base thickness of the dam. Then ice pressure, fourth one is your ice pressure. Ice pressure is created by thermal expansion exert thrust against 
upstream phase of the dam. What will happen in particularly if there is a dam over the period of cold means once the winter season starts particularly in Europe country what will happen enter liquid enter enter water will become ice. So, that means it will become a ice and solid pressure the, this pressure will be higher than your water pressure. So, this is one forces supposed to come ice pressure. Then once we are going for analysis of the gravity dam we will do it for gravity dam in adverse conditions this gravity dam particularly in adverse conditions that means what are the different forces has to come in adverse conditions. This ice pressure is not necessarily it will come particularly in summer season. So, ice will be ice formation will start particularly in winter in European country. Then last one is your fifth one is your earthquake forces. We have to check also results in inertia forces that include vertical motion oscillatory increase or decrease in hydrostatic forces because of earthquake force earthquake load earthquake what will happen to this gravity dam. So, this earthquake for forces also taken into consideration. So, gravity dam what are the different causes of failure one is your sliding along the horizontal plane that is called shear force sliding along the horizontal plane that means it will slide if I take it like this it will slide along the horizontal plane. So, that means what will happen that means what will happen it will it will it will resist against the shear force that means sliding along horizontal plane that means shear failure that means net force net force would be greater than shear resistance at that level. Then second second cause of failure is equal to because of all forces ice pressure water pressure earthquake pressure earthquake forces because of all forces there might be a chance that this particularly this hard dam it may topple it may rotate at about the toe at about the toe. So, this part has to be taken into consideration that means second type of failure is your rotation about toe. Third one is that if this construction has not been done properly it may highly possible that this material failure may occur the material may fail material failure may occur. So, example these are all means there are two three case examples I put it gravity dam if you look at this this is a period dam then second one is your it is in west Virginia also in India also gravity dam is there it is in west Virginia in US this gravity dam is there if you look at here one phase this is your off stream this is your off stream side this is your downstream side. If I draw the cross section if I draw the cross section simple cross section of this gravity dam look at here this is the water reservoir if I am looking like this. So, this side water reservoir is there water has to be remain stored and this side is your downstream side. Second case is your arch dam second case is your arch dam these are all curved dams curved dams which is dependent upon arch action for its strength which is dependent upon arch action for its strength transmits most of the horizontal water trust transmits most of the horizontal water trust arch dam these are particularly curved dam which is dependent upon arch action for its strength and transmits most of horizontal water trust behind them to the abutments by arch action means whatever the horizontal water trust horizontal water force is coming it will transmit by means of arch action by the arch action means whatever the water pressure is coming it will transmit to the abutment by means of arch action. Advantage of that it is a thinner and requires less material than any type of dam means it is a very thin and requires less material than 
any other type of dam used only and it has also limitation used only in narrow canyons. If you look at this cross sectional view, this is my width and this is your off stream side and this is your height, this is your total height of water and this is your complete reservoir, this is your complete reservoir and this is your toe and this is hill and this is your downstream face and this has been acted by this is your arch action. Then this is your axis, complete axis, this is your arch action. If I take the plan view, how it looks this plan view, this is the complete span and this is your abutment and this is your toe and this is your downstream face and these are all your radius and central angle. Particularly arch dams, it includes series of horizontal arches and series of vertical cantilevers, load distribution most load distribution near bottom of the dam, near top of the dam and most load carried by cantilever and arches known as trial load method. So, constant center that means constant radius, if I look at the types of the arch, one is your constant center that means this is a constant center, this radius is the radius is constant means throughout the radius is constant. This is one shape of arch type. Then another one is variable center, variable center means variable radius if you look at here. If you look at here, the radius at each point, the radius at each point is varying. That means R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, but the angle is constant, angle is constant. So, there are two cases. First case is your radius is constant, angle is varying. Second case is your angle is constant, but radius is varying. So, this first one is called constant center, second one is called variable center. So, generally it is used for U shaped canyons and used for V shaped canyons. We will see this, we will see this photographic graphical pictures of this. General arch dam design, generally thickness of arch reef, it has to be calculated from this T is equal to gamma H r by sigma w, t is equal to thickness of arch reef, t is equal to thickness of arch reef, h is equal to height of reef, gamma w is equal to allowable working stress for concrete in compression and r you can we can get it b by 2 sin theta by 2 and v is equal to b by 2 sin theta by 2 into a theta, r is equal to radius of arch r is equal to radius of arch, b is equal to canyon width, b is equal to volume of concrete required for single arch reef, then theta is equal to central angle in radian, a is equal to cross sectional area of reef, a is equal to cross sectional area of reef. Now, if you look at this in US it is boundary dam Seattle in US, if you look at here arch dam, how this arch shape, photographic picture may not be clear, look at this arch shape and look at this thickness, the material used is a very small quantity as compared to other arch dams. Again it is not visible, let me see, no. If you look at this, look at this, this is your arch shape, this part is your, this part is your upstream side, this part is your upstream side, this is your downstream side. Just one picture, maybe next class I will show that clear picture, can be one, one picture slide, can we make it so that more 
clarification more it, it may be clearer to all of you. Then third part we are starting with this that is of buttress dam. Buttress dams are dam in which the face is held up by series of supports, face is held up by series of supports. If this is my face, this is the upstream face, this is a downstream face, face is supported by series of supports held by series of supports. Buttress dam can take many forms, the face may be flat or curved, the face, uh, face may be flat or curved. Usually buttress dams are made of concrete and may be reinforced with steel bars. Usually buttress dam are made of concrete, made of concrete and may be reinforced with steel bar, may be reinforced with steel bar. So, if you look at this cross section, this is the width and this is the crest and this is your downstream face, downstream face, this is your height and this is your toe and this is your axis and this is your foundation, this is your upstream face with this series of supports in the upstream face is there. So, in case of buttress dam sloping membrane that transmits the water load to a series of buttress at right angle to axis of dam, at right angle to the axis of the dam. If you look at here sloping member, sloping member that transmits the water load to a series of buttress, sloping member, these are the sloping member that transmits the water load to a series of buttress, transmits the water load to a series of buttress. Increased form work and reinforced steel compared gravity dam. If you look at this increase form work and reinforced steel, as if I compare with this gravity dam, the reinforcement, the reinforced steel provided is more, less massive than gravity dam. Here what will happen, RCC bars generally provided, if you come back to gravity dam, it is a less massive, means the area and mass structure is coming, it is a less massive required one third to one half as much concrete, it requires one third to one half as much concrete, then use on a weaker foundation, use on a weaker foundation, if I make it into buttress dam, where it has been used, what is the purpose and how far it is advantage to gravity dam and particularly where specifically where it has been used, use on weaker foundation. So, Tom, some same forces means particularly same forces as gravity and as dam, the same forces has been acted like you can say ice pressure not as a prevalent, so gap of buttress relief majority of uplift forces. So, same forces, the, the way we have discussed this in case of gravity dam, what are the forces acting, it is the same forces about to act. Then types of uh, buttress dam, part 1 is your flat slab, that means flat concrete reinforced slabs, flat and concrete reinforced slabs. Second is your multiple arc, multiple arc that means series of arcs are there, these are the two types of buttress dam. Now, look at this example, buttress dam, first one is your buttress dam, if you look at this buttress dam upstream side, buttress dam if you look at here in Quebec, one case is your buttress dam, second now it is very clear. Now, if you look at here in Colorado also buttress dam has been used, this side is your upstream side, this is your particularly downstream side. Maybe you can stop it here, we will start with this other part of your embankment type of dam next class.